Hello, hello. Welcome to Pagan Crafting. I am starting off with this Dragon's Blood Soaked Resin. Soaked in, I believe it actually is California White Sage. Now I've been having a heck of a time trying to get this lit. I'm, my elders taught me not to blow on my smudge stick. So this one, I think because of the resin, is really good. Let's just start off our little area. I have paints here. I have clay, my paint brushes, my paint, myself, for you. A little bit of smudge to start your afternoon or your evening or day, wherever you are. For my hands, for creativity. And one more for you. So today we're going to start off with... Let's move this out of the way. I had to go ahead and do one part without you. Our last time we got together, we did the clay, our clay works here, our polypores, our clays, our mushrooms, and then I have a little lantern that's going to hang off the top. I'm probably going to have to glue that on. And then this is the back side. So, do, 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 do. how am I going to do? I think I'm going to do this way. So we're going to have this, this is a little house on a tree here. So I'm going to be painting the brown works, the tree, and then we're going to get into aqua door. We're going to have some greens here. I would like to see some oranges here. Oh, on the polypores. And if you guys are around, say hi, say how you do and let me know where you're from. So let's get started. Oh, and then I have we might, I have to paint some rocks here too. I forgot about those. We got rocks to paint and more fiddleheads. I'm planning on putting more fiddleheads down. So I got to remember to paint those. I'll put them out here. And these are all little mushrooms that I've done so far. Those ones, those mushrooms I'm going to paint off camera because I'll put these fiddleheads up here. Because it's going to take quite a while to get those little guys painted and no one needs to see that. Okay, so let's see here. That seems a little stiff. I must use glue on that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move this one over here just a little bit first. I'm just going to do a quick coat on this one. We're going to bring up some dry brushing. But first, let me just lay down a quick coat, see how much we need here. So what we're going to do is we lay down our black background first. And you could use a brown and then fade that to a medium brown to a cream, depending on the type of uh, wood or tree you wish to represent. You could also do a birch tree or maybe do a dark gray first, then a light gray fading off with some dry, some washes of white. Switching over to the other side, I'm also going to be doing a black background just on where I would see the bark of the tree. And instead I'm going to do the color straight on as per all the polymer clay sculpting that I was working on. Now this could be a little drier. You should wait till there's no more shiny spots, but I was doing this on a live show at the time. So we will work with it what we can. So I wound up mixing the brown and the black because the black was not completely dry, but this would have been the opportunity to do a nice uh, dry brushing here. And since I liked how it turned out, I had to do the other one as quick as I could before the black dried. <laughs> so sometimes you get happy little mistakes and you have to figure out how to reproduce them because you liked it. A 
Okay, so adding in our wood frame now on top of our door. As I start to paint this, we'll see more and more and more of it popping out. And this was a, a wood panel I have going straight across. And I'm going to do like an aquamarine uh, door for my wood, for my fairy little door. So I'm painting in a darker aquamarine and then I'm going to do a little bit of either dry brushing or I'll do the wood green in like a mint green, a lighter aqua. Working around all my little mushrooms, you can see them start to pop out. I got a couple of little polymorph mushrooms there on the door too and along the frame, the along the stonework. We're just going to paint around that for now. We don't need to do a base. And this is my lantern hook. So I'm going to make sure I want that to give it kind of like a root or branch look. So I went brown with that. And I'm going to do just a gray paint over top of all the stonework I worked on. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to trash brush in or do a dry brush in some lighter gray over top of the stone to get some different layers some different techniques. So just working in between all the little mushrooms, getting in all the little nooks and crannies around our little mushrooms and fiddleheads. And then I'm so glad I wound up doing some along the window stills too. We'll get back to that in a moment. But I'm feeling some of the brown of the tree is ready to rock. Bring in some oranges, purple, some lights, some reds. I didn't quite have the orange I was looking for, so I used a burgundy and a sunflower yellow to create this rich rich mandarin per, uh, orange here. So first uh, on the polypores near the base, near the tree base, I'm painting a cream color first. And I am trying, even though this is sped up, yeah, but I am trying to paint this as fast as I can so the paint remains wet. Because when I bring in my oranges and purples, I want them to overlap. I would like them to blend. So I'm gonna paint them fast so I can pick up some of the paint from, uh, from the previous lay down. Now painting along all the rest of the polypore. There we can see that at that angle. And then just along the tips, along the edges where we created all those lines when we're sculpting, that's where we're gonna put in the purple. So again, you could always paint this in sections. You don't have to paint like all of them all at once if you're not fast enough for painting. But do have a liberal, like a pretty good main amount of paint of orange when you're mixing in. I also got some of the brown on top of the polypore, so a thicker coating does help hide some of the mistakes that you possibly could have made or I made. There we be. Using a super fine tip here, while we're waiting for some of that orange to dry before I put in the purple, I'm gonna put in some wood grain. And that wood grain's gonna give us that uh, little punch of pop into the fairy door that I'd like to see. 
You could also do a little bit of dry brushing, but I'm just gonna do some haphazard wood grain lines. Nothing too perfect, because I also did a scratch outline underneath it, so it is gonna pick up the paint between the cracks that I laid down when I was sculpting. And again, just nice and thin lines. We're gonna speed this up here. And I think it really did need some of that light mint green over top of the aqua. It looked a little dark next to the browns by itself. And I'm gonna use some of the aqua marine, the light stuff for the little door handles. I think that'll also pop it out too. All right, there we have that. So now we're bringing in some cream and back to the orange to bring in our little baby polypores that are up the side of the, the doorway and up the side of the tree, the little ones. Again, working with the color while it's still wet so the the cream color and the oranges kind of blend into each other without having to do too much work. Now we're going to get into the purple and my orange still was a little bit uh, still wet so I wound up going in the purple with two layers. I just kind of let a little bit dry in between and went back with, sorry, with the purple again. And touched up wherever I needed. As it dried, I, you can go back to it again. Again, I, when I was doing this painting, it was live, so a lot of stuff I couldn't wait for it to dry. And we have our little window still underneath our vine windows. And I'm thinking the fiddleheads will be a nice green. We'll bring in a nice forest green for these little guys. Fiddleheads are a darker green. But the tops when they first came out are this color. So we're gonna go with this one because I think it just helps, again, punch out the colors. We're gonna bring in some purple and red mushrooms in the front. So the green's gonna really help be a contrast color for that later. Now adding a bit of darker green over top of the light green while it's still wet. Even though your mushroom stems are gonna be white and if you're working with white clay, still paint it white. You never know in time if it's going to yellow or age or what'll happen, just like a canvas. Always paint your canvas white even if you're leaving it white. Now rocking in the middle or the center of the mushroom using the cream color. So we're using a little bit of the cream mixed in with the purple just around the base of the mushroom and adding a little bit more purple here and there and the larger polypores where I need it. I kind of jump around a little bit. 
And now we're going to add white directly onto the little curly cue at the top of the mushroom and fade that into the purple. Just going to let that dry for a little bit. So I'm going to jump to my dark forest green and I'm going to use that as the background as the window covering as well as all the little vines and then we'll dry brush some of that lighter apple green on top of that and let the vines get picked up by that color that way so you really want to turn this upside down and around and get in all the cracks there And again, just a good coat of the forest green. Adding some little forest green highlights on some of my fiddleheads. Just for a little contrast, I think will look cool in there. Bringing in some red now for the red mushrooms. That's such a good punch of color. Now I'd like to make my pond. And I, oh, I can't forget about my rocks. So let's paint our little rocks. So while those dry, we're gonna need to put those into the pond. Okay, so I have that piece of paper you can see behind, kind of my line I'm following. So I'm gonna use my hot glue to make round and around and around kind of like a water little pond before that cools down laying in my rocks now you can let this cool down between each one which will give you more the ring effect in the water because we're going to paint this glue later you can see how it'll come off there so even if you get some of the um, wax paper or your parchment paper you're stuck onto it that's totally cool now i'm skipping over and painting because i'm waiting for the glue to cool down so i thought i'd just paint my little fiddleheads while i'm waiting okay so i can see that it's getting a little whiter so we can do another layer Trying to keep my pond within the size that I originally on. If not, if it goes too big, while the glue is still a little palatable, you can actually cut it even after it's cooled down. You can still cut it down to size. So making some water rings around the rocks and that'll give us some cool texture to work with. There. So we need to let that cool down now. And what I'm gonna do, like when, I, when I've when i made my hot glue mushrooms before, I use my alcohol-based felt pen. So I thought I could color the bottom of this and then the colors would kind of illuminate from the bottom. But it didn't work out quite as well as I hoped. So I wound up going with some paint. So I'm just trying out some different colors that could hopefully be effective. Going with some royals and teals in there. So again, if you have wax paper or parchment paper. Wax paper, this absolutely peels right off. Parchment paper, you're going to have to work it a little bit. Some of it may stick but it's gonna be hot glued onto your bucket. You're not gonna see it anyway. Okay, so I made it a little bit big, which is fine. I'd rather go have it bigger than too small and then I can add to it. Can always take away. forming it to a little bit of movement here and there because I like to also glue some moss down. So I'm going to let that glue cool down a little bit more because it's still a little bit see-through. 
So I'm just going to do some light, kind of a light gray, medium gray over top of the dark gray because I'm going to hit one more layer, a third layer on the stones. Just doing like a trash brushing, you could do like a light dry brushing with it too. And it's already popping out the stonework. I think one more layer after this of a really light gray, almost white, will I think give it some more texture. And a little bit of dry brushing on my root to hang my lantern. Now that I see that, I think I might want to pop out my trees a little bit more, my tree bark. And a little bit of light wash again. So our third layer on the stones. Look at that. That's all it needs. Just a little love. Take your time. So from a dark gray to medium to like a super white gray. And I'm adding a little bit more purple on my polypores. I think it needs a little bit more. Now that the orange has dried up a little bit, it's taking on a bit more purple. These are the same color schemes I did on my berry core mirror too when I made that. And adding in some more depth onto my mushroom, some lilac, mixing in with the royal purple. And I'm using a little applicator to make those dots. You could also use just the back of your paintbrush, a small one. Look at that, that's all it needs. Just a little extra. Now I'm going to do a little dry brushing on the wood here too. The dark brown was just a little bit lacking for me. So I think that gives it a little bit more depth to match up the rest of the door. And my metallic silver paint was a little bit dry. So I thought I'd cheat a little bit and use a metallic silver sharpie. Don't tell anybody, but that's what I used. So I gotta work on my little lantern here too. Now this little lantern wound up breaking on me. I didn't cook it long enough in the oven. So I'm gonna have to make another little one for this book. But I wanted to have a kind of a seed pod look that was glowing. So laying in some yellow first, gonna let that dry. So my first attempt at coloring, which the color when I made my mushrooms out of the out of the water, it worked out really well. This one uh, did not. I guess it was just too many layers. Not as thin as the mushroom lights that we've done in other previous videos. So we're trashing that idea, and we're gonna hop into some awesome paints. So I'm bringing in my acrylic paints that I use on my canvas because I want a certain blue. So we're going to play around with some cadmium. So I like to just kind of lay down one color first and I do do a thick layer. And then when you lay down your lighter colors, your whites and stuff, it's going to have a really cool blend to it and it's not going to look so purposeful. It'll give it more of a nice water effect. And now I got a bit of blue on my rock, but I can touch that up later. Not a disability.
and just dragging over some of the white blue over top of it and it just leaves enough up behind that creates a nice little pond effect for you. If you don't like it, go over with a little bit darker, bring back the lighter one that I just did there. Ooh, there we go. And touching up my little rocks. Now, I think that will look sharp right there. So bringing in some little dry brushing again and just laying over top of the vines of the window still. And we're going to do a little bit of a cream background. I find my bark to me is just a little bit too dark. So now that that's dry, we're going to lay in just some dry brushing and we can see more of the texture that I laid down with the tissue paper and Maj Podge now coming out. I'm just going super light here first. Not quite sure how dark I want to go. So I could always add more, but again, I can't take away. Unless I paint it all black and then brown again, which would not be pleasurable. So anyway, we're moving on here. So we're going to lay in, a, I think, another layer over top of this one. I am going to be bringing in a lot of moss. Looks like I got some blue I dipped in, not paying attention. So we'll have to lay in some extra moss there to cover that up. Hot little mistakes right there. And I like this now. I think this has brought out much more of the bark texture. And now the colors don't look so muted as well. All right, now my pond there, yeah. So what I think I'd like to do is shine up my pond. And I would also like to make the windows look a little bit glossy. So I think on my next video, part three, we're going to use some UV resin and pour it into the windows, shine those up, shine up the pond, add some moss and see what else we can do. And I'll, I might have to make another little lantern here, my friends. But join me and maybe another little lantern, who knows, on the next video, part three. And uh, we'll have some fun together and we'll add some more goodies. Well, thanks so very much for chilling out with me and have yourself an absolutely magical day.